Well, Burkham is a huge company, as you often talk about, David, and I'm thrilled to have two people to be able to discuss a partnership that this morning. It's a code development to do custom chips as well as 10 gigawatt deployment. We've got to find out a little more of the deployment, but first, we have to talk about the custom chips. Joining us now, first on CBC, is OpenAI co founder and President Greg Brockman. Spoke with him last week and broke on President Charlie Cowis. Uh, Charlie's going to be able to speak to a lot of the stuff that we, we know Hawk Tan to be able to speak to, and I think that this is in particular his bailiwick. I want to start immediately uh, by going to you, Greg. The, you've announced big deals with AMD. You announced a very big deal with NVIDIA. Uh, why do you need still one more deal? Uh, well, first of all, thanks for having me back. Um, the way I'd think about this is we need way more compute power than we are still on trajectory to build. And so I think that there is a whole industry that still needs to be created in terms of how to have both the power and the computational power available to power the AI revolution that we see coming. And so part of what we're looking for here, part of what we've been working with Charlie and his team on, is how to actually build chips that are customized for specific workloads so that we can take our knowledge of how to build the AI models and combine it with the best possible way of implementing that into silicon. Excellent. Now, Charlie, welcome aboard here. I've not you. met you. One of the things that I think people are skeptical about is the idea that Still, one more company has to be involved because there's just so much demand. Uh, and I know your company as being about maybe the most hard-nosed company in Silicon Valley. I don't even think, I think that's fine. I talk, I joke with Hawk about that. But the fact is, is that your company is not idly thinking, you know, we're going to do this thing. No money's exchanged, but we we're confident that OpenAI is going to exist. Will you please dispel a narrative which just says that this man and his company are spending like drunken sailors, and it doesn't matter what they do because build it if they come. Whereas I know Broadcom is saying we better meet this on demand or else we're going to be left behind. Yeah. Well, first of all, Jim, thank you for having us here. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here with you and Greg. Um, at Broadcom, actually, we've been building and enabling the AI infrastructure for over a decade. So it's not new experience for us. But what's exciting here with Greg and the team is we're actually having a very unique collaboration. As you said, it's a co-development. And it actually what I call a trifecta. So the first thing that we do is exactly that custom AI accelerator or custom GPU or XPU that Greg talked about. That's where the compute is. The second piece that we put together is the network. You need to connect all of these XPUs so that you actually can scale them. And one of the coolest things that we do is it's based on open standard Ethernet networking. And the best thing that comes on top of this is the software. And that's where Greg and Sam and the team come together. So when we combine all of these th things together and we fine tune them, we actually create the best AI platform that delivers the highest performance at really unprecedented power, as you were saying, and cost. And so we're very excited about this. We've been doing this for a while with Greg and I. We actually talk about it multiple times a week. And, and we see this happening. All right, so Greg, I want people to understand that there's an NVIDIA deal uh, that NVIDIA gave you $100 billion. I know a lot of people are thinking, there was a previous guest, Pat Gelsinger, saying, oh, yeah, you give them 100 you give them big money, they, they then give you the same thing, the circular deal analysis. But I've now heard a second deal that had nothing to do whatsoever with the NVIDIA infusion, other than the fact that NVIDIA is making a good bet on what I think is a company that could be worth a couple trillion. Yeah, I mean, the way that we think about this is that I, I think actually figuring out how to build this compute is extremely difficult and it's going to require financing in, in uh, different mechanisms. And so uh, we've really been going to the industry to say, hey, how can we possibly get ahead of this sort of avalanche of demand we see coming our way? Avalanche of demand, not hoping for avalanche, but avalanche. We are currently being swept along <laughs> by the avalanche. It's like between last month and this month, how much more business do you have? Uh, quite a lot. So, uh, I mean, first of all, Sora did not exist. A month ago, and no. it's now the number. Sora's one. pretty cool. I've been playing with it. Oh, glad to hear it. <laughs> it's so much fun. It's so much fun, and I think it just shows you how quickly these AI products get adopted, right? It's like we've never seen growth like this. So ChatGPT was the fastest growing consumer app in history, but actually Sora is now even faster. Incredible. Than that. Well, it's easy to download. My colleague David Faber has a question. Yeah, I guess I'd come to you first, Greg. And you know, my my question is simply: uh, Is this going to reduce 
reduce the uh, the cost per token uh, over time? I mean, I know in a podcast I think you guys have just done to sort of explain the deal as well, you talk about it leading to much better performance, faster models, and cheaper models. Um, is that sort of the goal here? Well, I think of it in two dimensions. So first of all, we definitely are decreasing the cost of of each token at a fixed level of intelligence. And we've been doing that for years, but having our own accelerator that's really tuned for specific workloads will let us really accelerate that, get more power efficiency, everything that you'd want. But even more importantly, we will be able to serve even smarter models. Mm -hmm. And so what you actually really want is you almost want the amount of dollars that people will spend on AI to increase because it's cheaper to get to the same level and you just want way more of it. You can actually reach new heights in order to solve new kinds of problems that were totally impossible otherwise uh, and Dave, you know on this again podcast I just I just referenced Sam Altman discussed you know 10 gigawatts incremental gigawatts on top of what you're already doing with other partners um, it's a gigantic amount of capacity is it going to be there for you I always wonder on the power side of this in particular you know given that's how you actually describe the size of these efforts will it be there for you and can you just put in perspective what we're talking about for our viewers in terms of the time and effort that will take? Well, the way to think about this is I think we are embarking on the largest infrastructure build in history. Right? I think that the, the kind of infrastructure that everyone is building, it really makes programs like the Apollo program almost small in comparison, which is a really wild statement, but it makes sense because the economic return is there, because this is really going to be the underpinning of our future economy and is already showing the, the promise and, and benefit to people's lives. And I, in terms of actually producing this power, I think that the, the power industry is one that's in, the, in America is actually very slow to update to demand. The, the growth there has been very s slow over time. And we've been spending a lot of time talking to executives, talking to these companies, saying that, hey, we need far more power than has been planned for. We're starting to see the response in the market. But you know, our view has been, for the past couple of years, we see this wave coming. And we've spent years really trying to say, what is the way to increase every single part of the supply chain? So this deal is part of that, of trying to say, let's build chips that are, that are you know, tuned for workloads, that are more power efficient. Um, but also, how do we have every single part of the supply chain respond to the demand that we see?